Tell me about what Dan Campbell said, the head coach of the Detroit Lions, when he was asked about Hendon Hooker and learning the offense, because it was the same comment, but you and I read it very differently. Yeah, so I, I, for those who don't remember, we usually – we, were, we didn't really know how to work this in last week, so we're working it in now. But as you guys saw, Jared Goff just signed a long-term extension with the Detroit Lions, which leads us to believe that Hinden, they do not see him, leads me to believe they do not see Hendon Hooker as their future the way I thought, because Hendon Hooker is already at a certain age. Dan Campbell was asked about Hendon Hooker, and his quote was that he hopes, he was basically saying he hopes Hooker can develop into the primary backup by the end of the summer. And But he goes, Dan Campbell's quote on Hendon Hooker, quote, yeah, really, he just needs to take a step up. We need to feel like by the end of camp, this guy, he can run this offense. He can be somebody we know that, man, we can play the game a certain way with him. We know he's going to be able to process the information. He's going to get us in the right play, and he's going to keep the ship afloat. That's it. We don't need him to come in and win a game. You just want to feel like, all right. So obviously he's going to need to take another step up is what Campbell said. And then he said, the good news is now the only good news he got said is he's getting a ton of reps. I'm reading that as Hendon Hooker has not figured out this offense yet. And it's we have, a, read. and there's a problem. It's a fair read where I disagree with you is he has to do it this year. I'm, I, I think that he would have a little bit more of an off season because of the ACL injury. I don't think that there's an incredible amount of pressure to get it done. Uh, this, this upcoming season. Now, I think it leads to the bigger picture. Does Josh Heupel's offense prepare a quarterback for the NFL? And I think there's some gray area there. And I know that in recruiting, you want to say you prepare quarterbacks for the NFL, but whether it's Joe or Nico or maybe somebody coached at UCF, somebody needs to have success out of his system in the NFL to kind of be the final gem in the recruiting crown of quarterbacks. And if not, I worry that it becomes, this is a little before your time, but Jeff Tedford had several quarterbacks before Aaron Rodgers that didn't pan out in the NFL. And everybody thought that Aaron Rodgers would just be another one. I think it's important that Hendon Hooker or Joe Milton, or we're still in the embryonic stages of Heupel, okay? And he's got Nico. Or Nico is very good in the NFL. Somebody has to be very good in the NFL at some point, if you want to keep recruiting quarterbacks at a high level. Now that quarterback is going to be asked to change his footwork significantly. And I'm not going to get in the weeds of footwork that would bore you to tears, but I can tell you the, the hopping footwork that they teach where you hop to one side and hop to one side is to cut off half the field. So you're looking at less. Those are your video platform. You can see me trying to act this out on a little bitty screen. I was like a doofus. But the bottom line is that's not what you're going to do in the NFL. If you can't read the whole field in the NFL, you're going to be in trouble. Hit like and subscribe if that makes sense. If you think Tennessee needs to have a quarterback have success in the NFL, if they're going to be quarterback you, which who knows? They've had two drafted lately. Maybe they're heading in that path. I don't think Milton's the guy, but who knows? Um, you don't think Hooker's doing very good in Detroit, but that's not to say he couldn't be like Joshua Dobbs and go somewhere else and have a chance. I think he's a gamer. Now, I'm not going to get into who practiced better before and whether or not they should have started Joe or Hendon. We, you and I have the same exact stance on that. But I do think Hendon is a gamer. I think you would agree with that. Um, maybe Josh fibbed about the practice thing a little bit because he judged the wrong guy the wrong way, but Hendon Hooker's a gamer. So I think if he gets an opportunity like Dobbs got with the Cardinals last year, I think he can be a very good quarterback in the NFL and better than he looks in practice, which coaches hate that, but those guys do exist. Hendon Hooker, this is my issue. Not with him, but I – you're right with Jeff, Jeff Tefford, by the way. And guys, read about what the Packers had to do with Aaron Rodgers. It was actually one of the best scouting jobs ever done by Mike McCarthy or anybody. He saw the potential, but he knew that Aaron Rodgers wasn't ready. So he sent him to a camp to retrain his footwork for three years before he could start. So they, so they drafted him. It was a footwork him. issue with Tedford as well? I did not know that. It was a footwork mm -hmm. issue. They actually, actually, they had to send him to summer football camps as a pro quarterback to relearn his footwork. We got this football and, camp for you. What's it called? Just for feet. 
There you go. There you go. So yeah, he had to do that and redevelop everything, retrain him. So he just saw the potential. The question I have is in college, can you sabotage a potential NFL career by teaching such bad habits that are good for your program, but not good for the NFL that a quarterback can't unlearn when they get to the pros? Okay. Well, yes, maybe. Okay. I'll give you an example. You want an example? Sure. I know a defensive back that went on to star for about eight years. Well, just go ahead and look him up. Jabari Greer. You look up Jabari Greer Jabari real Greer. quick. Yeah, I, I know Jabari Greer. I know yeah, Jabari Greer. Well, well, I know you do. How, how long did he play in the NFL? Because um, I can tell you he played basically. to win a Super Bowl. Yeah, he played basically zero snaps his first um, year because they told him, you have to relearn everything. from the. I'm not going to name the coach. There's no reason to throw dirt on his name. But you have to relearn everything. So just take a year off and relearn and don't worry about trying to get on the field. That's what happened with, um, with Aaron Rodgers. That's what's happened with uh, Jordan love. Who's also, uh, with the Packers coincidentally, it's happened with a lot of guys. So I don't think it's any sort of condemnation if Hendon hooker is not good last year, which he didn't play because of the ACL. And then this year, because it's basically his rookie year. I don't think that's an indictment of him. I also don't think it's an indictment of Josh Heupel. Because, listen, Josh Heupel is putting what he thinks on the field, what he thinks will win a national championship. Nobody went up to Tom Osborne and said, you're not getting Tommy Frazier ready for the NFL. He's running too much. Nobody should come up to Josh Heupel and say, Wow, you just won a national championship, but that, that Nico, he doesn't look ready for the NFL. He's still doing that hop step. Josh Eiple, do whatever you got to do to win a championship. Your your job is is aided by having success in the NFL, but that's not your job. I 1000% agree with you in that Josh Heupel's job is to win, and it doesn't matter. And you are right. Like, no one said that about Tom Osborne. And by the way, to be fair, though, Tommy Frazier didn't expect to go to the NFL as a quarterback, though. He came out of high school as an option quarterback, which they were still running during that time in high school. I don't know if any high school was the option anymore. You may know that, Dave, but I have no I don't really, think I need to tell it. you, but if I'm his dad, he's not playing option quarterback in college. Sorry. <laughs> no, I, he's, playing I, running I back wide, he's playing running back or wide receiver. And I hate it when people just automatically say an African-American should play another position. I'm not stereotyping. You know that. Um, he he would have – Tommy Frazier could have lined up and played almost any position he wanted to, with the exception of, like, offensive guard and defensive tackle. Yeah, no, okay, so I, I understand he that. Could have been uh, an edge, he could have been an edge rusher with 20 more pounds. Go ahead. Right, so I, I I agree, but what I but that wasn't a thing in the 90s. So now, though, like, if you're Josh Heibel and you're trying to get these star quarterbacks, they are – you are trying to – these quarterbacks are thinking about their NFL future. No, there's no doubt about that. Nico, let's be honest, he chased NIL, but he is thinking about his NFL future. George McIntyre is thinking about his NFL future. If it, even if Hendon Hooker, a pro quarterback, has success, do you think it'll be a deterrent for certain quarterbacks to say that it'll get out that I may make it in the NFL, but I'm going to learn some bad habits under Hypel, and if I go play for Hypel, then I'll have to sit for a year in the NFL. Or do you think they'll say, do you think they'll look that far ahead? Or do you think they'll just say, well, he raises the profile of quarterbacks, turns them into draft picks, and then those draft picks end up um, at some point making it fine. Um, I guess where I met with that is, how are the quarterbacks going to think on this? Now, to be fair, I mean, every Steve Spurrier quarterback got drafted. They all flamed out in the NFL, and that didn't stop them from drafting Steve Spurrier quarterbacks and <laughs> going sure. forward. Where do we stand with the poll question earlier? As I remind you that portions of the program are brought to you by our good friends just north of Knoxville. It is Memorial Day weekend, so a fantastic opportunity to go save a ton of money on one heck of a nice truck. Wheel drive 31954 24 Ford Edge all wheel drive 37975 24 F250 4 4 crew cab 54760 Ray Ford your East Tennessee Ford dealership Hey I asked a message for something about Miko Nico 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 what would you like to uh uh talk about for a second but uh, Caleb give us a reset on 
the poll question and then I'll reset. I, I want I want to do a poll question around Nico. Um, something along the lines of do you care if Nico is a success or Hendon Hooker? Do you care if former balls are successful in the NFL? Is that something that means a quarterback? I don't know. Right, Let me just give you the results of this of the first question first, because okay. we're going to talk about it in a little while. So okay. before I end the poll, the question was, would you ever consider wanting Jeremy Pruitt back at Tennessee as a defensive coordinator? 20%. Yes, he's a strong defensive coach. 80%. No, he's an income poop. And I, I knew how to spell an income poop, so I'm proud of myself. <laughs> N-I-M-K-I-M-P-O-O-P. N-I-N-C-O-M-P-O-O-P. Yeah, so nice. there we go. All right, 46 people voted on that. All right, so let's ask this. Um, do you care if former Vols QBs are successful in the NFL under Josh Heupel? I like it. Get that in there and then we'll have the answers. But first 60 seconds from Medicare Misty, your parents could benefit perhaps you as well from free Medicare advice. 19 years this year. Well, I've been in the community since 1993. You're getting a lot of information. Unlike when you were working, you basically they made the choice for you. Now you have to make the choice. Come to us and let us help you make it easy. Call Medicare Misty, MedicareMisty.com or 423-777-5577. Let us help them sleep at night. And we call her Medicare. For our sponsors, that's why they're here again. No charge for Medicare Misty. What's our new poll question before we get moving? Okay, so do you care if former Vols QBs are successful in the NFL under Josh Heupel? No, just win at Tennessee, baby. And yes, it's good for the program. Those are the two options. Yeah, Dylan's right. Uh, Successful alumni are pretty important for national recruiting. Thinking of Eric Berry in Kansas City, that's a great one. I mean, who in Kansas City knew about Tennessee football back then or or – a lot of the Midwest and West because Tennessee football was awful when Eric Berry played for the latter couple of years. So they probably didn't even realize that there was this star at Tennessee. So I think Dylan's right. I think you should care, but by the same token, I'm not going to go to Josh Heupel if I'm a fan and say, uh, you got to make Nico a great NFL quarterback because he's a good guy. And uh, I don't really care how he plays in college. You're not there gonna are- say that. Yeah. No, they're not. It's it, it, it's funny you say that because there are subliminal um, – I, I need a neuroscientist on here to talk about this because there are sometimes no, subliminal no. decisions – there are subliminal decisions people make that they don't realize they're doing it as part of a pattern. And it's funny you bring up Eric Berry and his success because I don't think they did this on purpose. I don't think any scouts for the Chiefs were like, well, Eric Berry was successful at Tennessee, so this player will be successful. And he's from Tennessee, so this Tennessee player will be successful. However, I do think that subliminally – was a reason for the Chiefs taking a lot more chances on Tennessee players recently. They took a chance on Trey Smith and on Jerome Carvin. And I think it was in the back. I think just Eric Berry and Dustin Colquitt were in the back of their minds when they took Trey Smith and Jerome Carvin. I think it's in the back of your mind, but I think those are special cats probably in coaches' meetings. All but you don't it. think like – if Trey Smith I, is it a makes me think, Just from knowing those people – it makes me think that the Chiefs place a higher emphasis on face-to-face interaction than maybe some other teams because those guys are smart, engaged individuals. Yes, but if Trey Smith is a sixth rounder, if someone's a sixth rounder, Dave, you probably know this with scouts, like they probably have like 20 options as a sixth rounder, right? And it's well, like yeah. they really could lean one way or another, and it's almost a coin flip where they lean. And they don't you think subliminally, like maybe the final trigger that they don't even know is Tennessee, Eric Berry, Dustin Colquitt, Trey Smith? I think it, I I think, you know, um, I think that, yes, that could affect your decision. But I think what you're actually describing is the relationship that you have, not just with Heupel or coaches before him, but the relationship you, you have with some of the administrators to get some really good insight as to a character's, uh, as to a guy's character. In other words, Hey, you want to be a beat reporter? You want to be a scout? Make friends with the trainer. They know everything. 
There you go. Make friends with the trainer. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> <laughs> just, uh, yeah, not that type of friends. What are you talking about? Look at All Dave, right. Dave and his bad ideas over here. Dave and his devious thoughts. <laughs> I heard a comedian talking about that. Uh, Bruce Springsteen song. Hey, little girl, is your dad at home? That's not creepy.